the FOSS world is one of the few areas still holding on to mailing lists, most notably with the Linux kernel mailing list. Distros have them, even some desktops have them, and one such desktop is GNOME, or at least was GNOME, because now they're in the process of finally shutting down their mailing lists. Now this isn't just coming out of nowhere, this has been a very long work in progress, initially being announced back in 2020 when they opened up their Discourse instance. Discourse, not Discord, Discourse being the forum software. But they had a lot of things to migrate, so the process hasn't exactly been quick to do. For any of the non-boomers out there, I'll give you a TLDR on what a mailing list is. Think of it like a fairly early forum. Rather than logging into a specific forum website where you go and make posts, you go and reply to things, instead what you do is you send an email into the mailing list to achieve basically the same goal. Generally this is done with plain text emails, but there's no fundamental reason why you can't have HTML emails as well. It's just a lot of people in this space like plain text, so that's what ends up being used. And after you send in this email, whether it's a post or a reply, it will then be sent out to everybody subscribed to the mailing list. Now generally because this is plain text, it makes it very easy to parse, very easy to search, and very easy to archive publicly. So you'll notice there's like five or six different archives just of the Linux kernel mailing list. And being such a basic way to display data, it is great for people to use screen readers as well. Now you may be wondering, why are they shutting down the mailing list? It seems like it's been working just fine for all of these years. Well, there's kind of two main reasons, and a couple of sort of supplementary ones. The first main reason being, the software it's actually running on. So, GNOME's mailing list, like a lot of the older mailing lists that never really migrated to anything newer, are relying on GNU Mailman 2. Now the 2 in its name is very, very important. That means it's the Python 2 version, and Python 2 has been EOL'd since about 2020, but has effectively been dead for a lot longer than that. And as for Mailman itself, the last update it received was the 13th of December 2021. At this stage, it's basically in maintenance mode. It's not really going to receive any big feature updates. If you want to see that, you should go and migrate over to Mailman 3, which is still actively being updated. And in a comment to the register, Neil McGovern said this, Like many other projects would use Mailman, we are finding that relying on a Python 2 program is not sustainable. I know some of the like really old boomers don't want to admit it, but Python 2 is very long dead. No one cares about maintaining it. If there are any bugs or anything like that, you will need to do it yourself. And that just isn't really viable when you want to go and work on other things like the thing your project is actually about. Now, I mentioned Mailman 3, which I believe as of the recording of this relies on Python 3.7 or newer. It doesn't matter exactly which version it is, Either way, it is Python 3, and you can absolutely migrate a Mailman 2 instance into a Mailman 3 instance. There is documentation on how to do this on the Mailman 3 docs, but when we're talking about one mailing list, this is totally doable. When we're talking about the size of the GNOME mailing list and how many sublists it has, that is going to be a very, very big process especially a big process when you don't really care about the existence of a mailing list. I'm sure if the Linux kernel had to do it or someone who really cared about them needed to go to a newer version, they would do it. GNOME's not that project though. Now, I'm sure it's not every single GNOME dev, but a lot of them, especially a lot of the influential ones, don't seem to like using mailing lists. For example, here is a comment from eBassy, otherwise known as Emmanuel Bassi. Some were saying that sending in patches via a mailing list is a great workflow, and that's basically why the Linux kernel uses them. And eBassy said this, 
if only. Patches as email is terrible even on the kernel, and it's still mostly used because of Stockholm Syndrome, not because of any technical merit. Now, I'm sure he's being very um, inflammatory on purpose, but it's very clear that he doesn't like a mailing list. And outside of business usage and basically just that, a lot of young people, even young developers, don't really use email that often. If I want to communicate with someone, even a lot of the projects I want to communicate with, it's going to be done through some sort of discussion platform or messaging platform. It may be proprietary, it may be open, but usually it's not done through emails. Yes, a mailing list absolutely works in the Linux kernel, and there is no shortage of Linux developers, but we have to acknowledge that using a mailing list as your main form of discussion basically acts as an unnecessary barrier to entry. The vast majority of developers and the vast majority of projects, even in the FOSS space, don't do the communications through a mailing list, and it's very likely that when you get involved with something like the kernel, that is the first time you've ever had to use one. But as I briefly touched on earlier, the plan isn't to reduce the overall amount of GNOME communication. In fact, it's the exact opposite. And this takes us to the second major reason, reducing the amount of fragmentation amongst the GNOME communities. So for all intents and purposes, a mailing list is basically just a forum. It serves pretty much the exact same function, and that is where their attention is being shifted. So I mentioned them spinning up a discourse instance, and you've probably seen this instance before, this is just the GNOME forums. And Discourse is a really popular piece of open source forum hosting software used by projects like Manjaro, like Framework, like the NVIDIA developer forums, and even things like the Roblox developer forums, when you start realizing how discourse actually looks, you start noticing it basically everywhere. Now, initially the discourse started as a new home for GTK development talk, which previously was over several mailing lists, but also as a place to discuss GNOME just generally as a platform. Since then, other categories have been added, and some other mailing lists have migrated to it as well. Tracker, GNOME Contacts, to name a few examples. But this basically creates a problem. Now you have pretty much the same discussions happening in two separate locations. So you may not know just at a glance where a project you're looking at is actually being discussed. And the GNOME Infrastructure Team Coordinator, Andrea Verri, told the register this. Since we introduced Discourse, GNOME's Mailman instance has seen a decline in utilization over the years. The new platform offers way more features than Mailman, including gamification, which newer generations in general appreciate. I'll get into that in just a moment. But also markdown support, RSS feeds, proper spam support, multiple authentication types, so on and so forth. So gamification generally has a really bad reputation, but when we are talking about a forum, we mean things like this. Having your reply count be very clearly visible, and in many cases, you have your post actually sorted by the amount of replies. And then in the post itself, you have things like your up dudes and your down dudes very clearly visible. In some cases, they'll be like emoji replies and things like this. Generally, the basic stuff you'd expect to be there for a forum. Now, gamification can absolutely go too far, but when we're talking about the basic structure of a modern forum, let's not pretend that we don't all like it, at least to some basic extent. There is no hiding from the little bit of dopamine rush when you realize your post gets a lot of the updates. We can argue all day about whether it's bad or not. I generally fall on the side that at this level it's fine, but much further it becomes sort of a problem. But let's not pretend that we don't like it. One other thing about discourse is if you just really cannot leave email behind or you have a more legitimate reason like you have a screen reader and don't like the way that discourse plays with that software, you can go and actually interact with discourse over email. When Mozilla started using it, they made this post here explaining basically how you would go and do so. This allows you all of the basic things a mailing list would give you, whether that's making a post, making a reply, or having all of those posts and replies actually sent to your email. 
and even letting you do things like interacting with the discourse platforms. You can like a post, you can mute a post, and things like this. And the register sums up this entire move really well. The move is part of a general modernization of the GNOME project's infrastructure, which has also seen a move from IRC to Matrix and from CGIT to GitLab. Now, in the case of their IRC, the GNOME IRC actually is still running. However, Matrix is the primary way to do the live interaction with the project. The IRC is there because there's not really any harm in it existing, and they just bridge the two together. So ignoring the IRC, GNOME is going down to three platforms, all with a distinct purpose. We have the GitLab, which exists for sending in patches, for holding the code, for handling your bug reports, and for technical patch-specific discussion. The Matrix is there as a more real-time live communication platform, and then Discourse is there for more of the long-form, well-thought-out discussion that would normally happen on a mailing list. And all of these platforms remain open source. Now, much like the long-dead GNOME Bugzilla, the archive of the GNOME mailing list is going to remain online. So if there's anything you want to go back and check, or for people like me, if I want to go do a video on some random thing that happened 10 plus years ago, doing that research is still going to be pretty easy to do. There's not really any reason to take it down. Sure, you could argue that it's taking up storage space, but it's not really a networking issue. How many people are going to go visit, like, a random email from five plus years ago? From my perspective as someone who just looks through the mailing list archives, I personally don't hate them. I find them very easy to dig through because, as I mentioned, they're pretty much just plain text. But from a user's perspective, from a developer's perspective, I can totally understand that if you grew up using, you know, MSN, Reddit, Discord, Twitter, whatever other platforms you're using, you prefer using a, you know, a platform way of interaction rather than email. But many of you guys may differ, so let me know your thoughts down below. Do you like mailing lists or do you think this is a good move that other projects should follow suit with? I would love to know. So if you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe, and Ribeiro Pay linked down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over T. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robinson Plays. That's going to be it for me. And I'm out. <laughs>